Hello! I already showed you how to use the reframework template in a transactional process which has four states. One for the initialization, one for getting new transaction data, one for the processing, and one for enemy execution of the workflow, along with the loop for getting new transaction data until the queue is empty. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the reframework for a linear process, which will have only three states, the initialization, the processing, and the ending. So let's go to the workflow. So I have here a simple sequence that I designed for this demo, and what it does is basically opening the Acme website from UFF, then getting my credentials for, for this website from an orchestrator asset, then it types these credentials into their corresponding fields on the page, then clicks login, and after that it navigates to the work item section and then extracts the table that is in the page and writes it into a Excel spreadsheet. So note that there is no orchestrator queue involved, neither any Excel spreadsheet that should be read for getting any data. It's just a sequence that goes from start to end in just one go. And you can also see that I didn't worry about logging each of these activities. Neither did I worry about handling any exception that this workflow could generate. Because as I said, it's a very basic workflow, so these things would not cause any major troubles. But picture a larger scenario with a more complex process logic. These exceptions could cause many problems in the absence of logging and would leave things disorganized. So I'd have to spend some time making these adjustments. But can I use the reframework template to address these issues more easily, even for this workflow that is not a transactional process? Well, yes, and now I'll show you how. I'll start by grabbing the reframework template. For that, we click here on the Home tab, go to the Templates section, and then choose here the Robotic Enterprise Framework, and click here on Use Template. Now I can name the project, I will call it Linear Process, and then I'll choose its location. Ok, perfect. Now I just hit Create and this will generate our framework. Ok, so here it is, the reframework in its default state with these four states. And I'm gonna start by getting rid of this get transaction data state because since this idea of getting transactions in a loop will not exist anymore, this state is then unnecessary. So for that, I'm going to grab all these three transitions here, the system exception, business exception and then success. and put them here directly in the end process state. So I grab it here, now the next one, and the last one I will put it oops, oh here it is, right here. Ok, system exception, business exception, and success. Perfect. Now, this transition successful here from the initialization to the get transaction data, I will move to directly to the process transaction state. Ok. And now we can get rid of this get transaction data. This means that if any exception occur here in the process transaction state, the process will be ended. The same applies here for the initialization. Ok, with this done, I will progress by editing the config file with the variables that we are going to need in our example of the Acme website. So I go here to the settings tab. Since we do not have, do not have a queue, I can delete this. And I will put here first the Acme URL. Secondly, the name of my asset in Orchestrator that contains the credentials, so it will be Acme Credentials. 
and its name in Orchestrator is also Echo Credentials. Perfect. And the last one is the, this logf business process name will be the name of the process, so we'll call it linear process. And the last one, the path of the Excel spreadsheet that is going to be written. I will call it workbook path. The name in the dictionary and its value will be work items dot xlsx. Perfect. I can save it. And I'll move to the workflow once again. I'll come here to the initialization step. In it the first run step. Because I will adjust the cube all process workflow. Since we have just one process that is going to be the Google Chrome, we can just put here a cube process with the process name Chrome. Alright, this is done. We move back here and go here to the invoke init all applications workflow to once again init the Google Chrome. So I'll call it a open browser activity. And it's the URL. You can see here that the in config is automatically here. But it comes here by default via the reframer. So it will be in config acme url dot to string. Perfect, simple as that. We can save. And now our initialization state is done. I will move on here to the process transaction state. And here we will put our logic. Right, so I will open the workflow. And you can see here that the transaction item is a argument that is previously defined by default. I can delete it because, well, we are not using it. And okay. I'll start by opening the Acme system one. Perfect, here it is. I will use a attach browser activity. I can delete this comment here also. I will indicate it. Here I can I can use our get credential. And here on the asset name, uh, let me just define oh it's already defined, okay. So the asset name will be in config acme credentials dot to string. And its output will be the password and also the username. Okay, from here we can get grab two type into activities so we can put the login and the password in the web page. I'm just pointed here email and also the password, and the text will be the username and the password. Oh, sorry, it has to be a type secure text. Perfect, password. And now the secure test will be password. We hit here the simulate type to make it quicker. Now we have to put a click into the login button. Here it is. Let me just rename the activities to follow the best practice. Type secure text password. And also the type into email. Perfect. Now we have to deal with navigating to the work item section. For this, I will log in. Perfect. We have to put a click activity to click here on the work items.
Okay. Click work items. And inside the work items, I will scrape this table here. For that, I'm going to go here to the data scraping section, click it, and then we can select any value and it will prompt us asking if we want to extract the data from the whole table. So we hit yes. And here it is our table. We have to delete this column here because this symbol does not get recognized. So we just click here on edit data definition and get empty columns, we turn it to zero. Okay, so now the column is not here anymore. And we choose here, uh, change here to zero. So we can get all of, all of these values. And we can hit finish. We get prompted, prompted to indicate the next page button. But for this demo, I will just leave it grabbing the first page here. So I'll just hit them. Perfect. We have here our data table. I will just move it out of there because it's not necessary. And we can delete the sequence. Structure, structure data table, uh, work items, DD. And this data table here, I will call it also work items DD. And the last activity here will be our right range. Right here. The workbook path comes from the config file, so in config workbook path dot two string chic one and then we delete this and the data table will be work items dd. We just have to click here on the add headers. And okay, our processing is done. Just uh, check it here. Oh, okay, it's because I deleted the transaction item. Nothing to worry about. Okay. And the last thing we have to do is to go here on the end process. Want to try? And the close all application will be basically a click on the logout button. So will be a click activity on the logout button. Perfect. Log out. And it's done. We can now just run our workflow to see it in action. Let me just log out here. Perfect. Oh, I forgot to change the type of the open browser. Simple mistake. Let me just fix it. Um, in it all settings. It's here, I assume. Oh yeah, here, Chrome. This should fix it. Now, once again, let me just hit the bug. Okay, perfect. The execution in it. And we can see here. Let me just refresh it. We can see here the data table generated. The Excel spreadsheet, sorry, sorry. And here it is. The workout MID, its description, the type, status, and also the date correctly put here using the reframework. Also we can see here on the output all of the correct log messages following the best practices and of course 
the exception handling right for every possible error in this workflow. So this is the end of our demo. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.